In this video, I want to talk about the urea cycle. So before we actually talk about the urea cycle, we have to think about what happens if there's too much nitrogen around. Well, we and other organisms need to get rid of it. It's as simple as that. If there's too much nitrogen, we want to get rid of it. So how do different uh, animals get rid of nitrogen? Well, some have ammonia and ammonium, which they just allow to diffuse away. Um, so fish and amphibians are like that. These ammonia and ammonium ions, of course, water soluble. They just diffuse away into the water. Now, we as humans have this thing called urea, hence the name for the urea cycle. We create this compound here. Two things that are important about urea that we want to keep in mind are that it's non-toxic and that it's water soluble. And we'll talk about why those two points are important in just a second. Now, some reptiles and uh, birds get rid of this product here, which is uric acid. So this is for reptiles and birds. Um, and this uric acid is not water soluble. It's water insoluble. But we're not going to focus too much on that or this. We want to focus on urea. So like I mentioned, urea, this molecule here, is non-toxic and it's water soluble. It's non-toxic and that makes sense because this is the way that we're getting rid of our excess nitrogen. Our excess nitrogen specifically is excess ammonium ion, right, which is toxic to us. So if we can take a, a toxic molecule and incorporate it into some other mo molecule to make it um, non-toxic, then we're going to be able to do that. That, that. That's a good thing. So that's essentially what's happening with urea. It's also that it's water soluble. That makes sense because urea does have to flow through our blood, which is, of course, mostly water. So let's talk about the overview of the urea cycle. The purpose, of course, like I mentioned, is to get rid of excess ammonium ion. So basically, it's getting rid of a toxic compound, which is basically detoxification. So this excess ammonium ion travels through the blood uh, to the liver, specifically, where the urea cycle occurs. Now, this ammonium ion is carried through the blood by glutamate or glutamine with, in the form of those amino groups on these compounds. So now, once it's in the liver, uh, the excess ammonium will join carbon dioxide and along with some ATP to make uh, this molecule here, which is called carbamoyl phosphate. So this carbamoyl phosphate, the red portions that I've drawn the amino group here and this carbonyl group come from uh, the ammonium ion and the carbon dioxide respectively and this phosphate co one comes from the ATP. The enzyme that catalyzes this step is called the carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 or CPS1 and this enzyme is uh, basically regulated in such a way to control the amount of ammonium or excess nitrogen that flows and in, into the urea cycle after being created, uh, after carbamyl phosphate is created. So uh, essentially, once that carbamyl phosphate is created, it goes to the urea cycle. And the urea cycle has a bunch of different intermediates, a few of which I've drawn here. This one here you should recognize as a particular amino acid. So the amino group here, carboxyl group here, and this are our group here. This is aspartate. This thing here, this intermediate, you should recognize as an intermediate of another pathway, the TCA cycle. This thing is called fumarate. Of course, the end product is this urea here. So notice I've drawn it some portions red and some portions blue. The red portions are to indicate that this this portion this red portion here came from the red portion of carbamyl phosphate, which of course is this ammonium ion here and this carbon dioxide. This am amino group here is blue and it's actually the same as this blue amino group here from aspartate. So that's something to keep in mind and I'll talk about the specific reactions of the urea cycle in the next video. So how is this urea, once it's created in the liver, how is it excreted? Well, I wrote here, made here, so it's obviously going to start in the liver. It's going to go to the blood, which is good because urea is water soluble and the blood is mostly water. We mentioned that earlier. Once it goes from the blood, it goes to the kidneys, because the kidneys are involved in excreting waste products, and uh, urine is produced, 
and then urine is what we release or excrete to the outside of our bodies. Some uh, some urea is also excreted in sweat, so you can sweat out urine. Not urine, <laughs> you can sweat out urea. Um, I hope that video was a helpful introduction to the urea cycle. One last thing, I'm a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com. For more details, check out the description below. Thanks for watching.